On the Oddili home invasion, former President Jonathan urges federal government to review whistleblower policy. And Vice President Yemi Osibajo urges lawyers to end slow judicial process. Well, this is Plus Politics. I am Mary Anako. Former President Goodluck Jonathan has called for the modification of the whistleblower policy, saying it can damage the economy if not well managed. He made the recommendation while reacting to the invasion of the Abuja residence of a judge of the Supreme Court, Justice Mary Odili, allegedly on the information given by a whistleblower. Well, joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner Chris Itamnola and former special advisor to the River State Governor, Upanabo Inko Tara. Thank you very much, Mr. Tara, for joining us. Good evening, Marianne, and good evening, dear. I, you and I have spoken about this invasion um, before, but then we're, we're looking at it from the whistleblower policy angle. Um, let's revisit this issue of whistleblowers. Now, um, we know that the, the whistleblower policy became more uh, known of when we... Um, when the government came up with the uh, idea of people returning funds or people re reporting, um, you know, looters, pu public office looters. Uh, and of course, uh, we all know that how that ended. A lot of these whistleblowers ended up not being as protected as they should be. A couple of them complained of the monies because a percentage of these monies were supposed to be given to them. But in terms of the Mary Odili um, situation, how does this even play out in the first instance? Well, the whole thing turned out to be messy when um, the Attorney General of the Federation denied involvement. Um, of course, the magistrate agreed that it was issued, but the reasons he advanced were ridiculous because he said uh, it was um, they went to the wrong address and they gave me the wrong information. As sad as it is, I don't think we should really bother about a search warrant issued against any particular person because nobody is insulated from prosecution, nobody is immune from prosecution. And when they issue a search warrant, it does not necessarily mean what they actually went for could be found in the home of the person's property that has just been searched. Nevertheless, Nigerians are worried because of their views. It is being weaponized right now to embarrass people. I also want to state this, that I also disagree with the situation where a search warrant will be issued and the operatives that are supposed to execute the search warrants are being frustrated because that will have a negative effect on our justice system. Nevertheless, the only way we can end this um, unnecessary abuse of the issue out of such water is to ensure, for example, on the part of the whistleblowers, if an information is given to the security operatives, they should ensure that they ascertain the veracity of that information. They should not just swing into action immediately without carrying out investigation. Mm. They should ensure that proper investigation is being carried out before they swing into action because it could become embarrassing to the victim. Mm -hmm. And just like now, the credibility of a search warrant is being questioned. If I see a search warrant today, honestly, I will not want to honor that search warrant. That's why I think it has a negative effect on our justice system because I will doubt, impugn the authenticity of it. A situation where, if it, what are the contents of a search warrant? One, it must have the date and time of issue. Mm -hmm. Two, a confirmation of the probable cause to search. Three, even the period that the operator will move in to carry out the search, the period is even stated. So it is not of your own being will, of your own volition that you move in when you want to move it. It is stated. Mm -hmm. So when all those things are stated, the address, of the house to be sacked. And that's where I say it is that laughable when they say it was done in error. Because you, if this, at the very early leave, Justice Major Delay's house is, for example, number 10 B. B. Ravi Street. And on that paper, 10 B. B. Ravi Street is written, 
or nine DB Ravi Street. There is no way you can go to number 10 DB Ravi Street. It's not possible. There is no investigation was carried out. And that is why it is generating the polarity generating. And that is why it is being perceived as um, witch hunting. Let me come in there. I I'm, curious. I'm curious. I'm curious. As... I don't think it has to do with assassination. Some are even saying it has to do with bringing her into dispute so that she will not emerge as the CDN. It's exactly to be in the poverty of logic because she is to retire next year while the CGN will retire the year after. Mm -hmm. So the issue of succession does not even come in. You know, I, I, I want to ask. I want to. I want to ask about yes. the modus operandi because such warrants, yes, um, are, are very important. But then, how do they? You talked about how it's been carried out the time, and there have there have been several times where security agencies, especially uh, the uh, state Department of State Services, break into houses at odd hours of the night. So I'm wondering that time that is stated on the warrant. Why is it not adhered to strictly? And the issue of mistakes, I have... But at that time, I didn't get at that time that what? You said that the time that they need to effect that search yes, is also yes, clearly written on the warrant. Yes. But then we see, that's yes. what I'm asking, the adherence is the issue here. Because I have, I have taken the report of a man who, whose house was broken into by DSS agents... And they were not necessarily looking for him. They were looking for someone else. So this can actually be a mistake, can't it? But then it's the way they carry out the search that should be questioned here. Why go about it as if you were there to assassinate or kill a person? Because the way they went about it, the man lost money that he kept in his house. He lost jewelry. Um, they, they, they destroyed the appliances in his house, etc., etc. Is, is that is how that a search warrant is supposed to be carried out? If that such warrant, if that such warrant, because like I said, it will have a period on it. So if the, the operatives move in, not within that period stipulated by the magistrate or the judge, then it's an illegal act. Then you sue. It's an illegal act. Just like in other cases, there are, you have the time when to execute, you cannot, the prisoner or the executor cannot just get a money to say, um, today it has to be uh, 2 o'clock, that's going to have the time. No, everything is stated. If you do it before, it's illegal. You do it after, it's illegal. Um, before, it's murder. After, it's murder. If everything is time. So if the doctor is a period, maybe on it, you could say 10 p.m., between 10 and 11, or 10 p.m., or 12 p.m., but if they say so, if the court grants it, for mm -hmm. whatever security reasons, the court grants it. Then the court has granted it. But if the court doesn't, then the people, the operatives, acted illegally. And probably that is why people are weaving the interpretation of assassination. That's why probably they are weaving. And, second, and secondly, don't forget that you have the antecedent where Buhari has always ordered, right from when he was the military dictator to date, has always ordered the uh, security to invade the residences of just, just uh, uh, judges and justices. And that's why you did in the jury that what do you have against but the judiciary? The, but the presidency, but, but the presidency has not in judiciary. any way... Uh, has not in any way been incriminated in this issue. It's the the, the person who no, fingers no, who's been fingered in this you, issue was the attorney the, general. The, the office of the attorney general, the office of the attorney general, of course, the attorney general, the attorney general, the attorney general, the attorney general was accused. Don't forget that that is one and number two. But the attorney general is not the president the of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The, 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 sorry. Sorry? The Attorney Sorry? General is the Attorney General of the Federation, not the President he of the Federal the, Republic. He acts, the, he acts at the behest of the President. He acts at the behest of the President. There is no way a, there will be a raid on the premises of judges and justices without knowledge. Supreme Court justice without the imprimatur of Mr. President. That is not possible. That is not given how highly placed they are. It is definitely not possible. And they are doing well into being a lawyer. It's a very senior lawyer, senior advocate of Nigeria. It's definitely not possible. He must have gotten the consent because he would have been queried by Mr. President. Mm. So he must have gotten the consent of Mr. President for him to have done that. He cannot do that of his own volition. He cannot do that so much. It's not, it's not possible. That's not possible. Let me, Nobody can come let me refer to, to the statement by former President Goodluck Jonathan. I'd like to quote him directly. He said the concept of whistleblowing helps to give information, but that information should be slightly investigated. And if you need to be sure before you strike, 
it should be modified so that security operatives do not go into the voice of discoveries. If things are not done properly, he says, people will exploit it to their advantage. People who give wrong information to security operatives should also be punished. As much as whistleblowing is okay, it will help to control it. It must be done in a way that it will not injure the economy. I'm trying to put side by side the whistleblowing issue and the economy and what ties it together. That, that, is, that is exactly what is a little bit uh, confusing to me. Because um, whistleblowing is all about giving information secretly, surreptitiously to the establishment for them to carry out certain actions. Information that will help the economy. For example, you have a criminal, you have uh, an armed robber, or you have um, uh, a, a, a permanent secretary or an auditor general, or somebody is committing some sort of fraud in the ministry. You go and disclose to the authorities so that they investigate. That's what he's talking about. That's why I say you don't just take the information hook, line, and sinker. You know, because what if that information is a function of law? See, what if the, 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 the informant laws or reviles the victim and will just come up to say, this man, just because he's his political enemy, or just because he took his girlfriend, or just because he slept with his wife, will now say, this man is involved in this. I know so many cases like that, that this man is involved in this, and in actual fact, the man is innocent. And if you have such an informant, that dispenses mendacity, then that informant himself, and that's why every whistleblower, the operatives must ensure that they know the houses, they know them to their houses. If you come and give me any information, you must show me where you reside, your office, or something. I must trace you to something, your village, everything. So that if that information is questionable, I will come back for you. And that will very largely thing will discourage dispensation of falsehood. Hmm. That is exactly what Jonathan is talking about, and I completely agree. But then, on the issue of having missile blame will have a negative effect on the economy, I don't really think so. I don't know why he's saying that. I, I, I cannot question his, uh, uh, his own argument, but the truth about it is that it is rather positive than negative. Because if, for example, now I say Marianne is an armed robber, and they invade Marianne's house, and, or Marianne has, is a gun runner, she has guns at home, and they invade Mary Ann's house, and there is no gun. The only negative aspect is on the in image of Mary Ann, if it is who beyond the devil that there, there is no gun in her house. That's the only thing. But how will that affect the economy is what I cannot reconcile. I don't know. I'm not saying what, what he's saying is not correct. Okay. But I cannot pattern it. I cannot pattern how it's going to affect the economy negatively. Because if I'm sure of my information, if I'm sure of my information, and I give this person that tell you disclose that information to you, and you can't carry out if it works fine. Even if it doesn't work, how does it affect the economy? I, I can't comprehend that, honestly. He might have his reasons. Maybe if his acts, he's going to expand it. He's going to elucidate. But I cannot, as I sit here now, tell you how negatively, but I can explain how positively, like in the issue of so on. Okay. But negatively, I don't understand how it's going to affect the economy. Let's come back to the way or the modus operandi of, uh, you know, search, um, searches in different houses um, at the behest of, you know, um, a magistrate or, you know, somebody being armed with uh, that warrant. We have seen many people whose houses were broken into, like I said earlier on, who sometimes are shot dead because maybe they're resisting or maybe they, maybe they were not ready for this invasion or, you know, sometimes people may be said to be feigning ignorance, but then they have no idea because you're in the wrong house. I think one of the most recent is that the DSS raided the house of one of the ex big brother Africa um, housemates and, and um, she was scantily clad. She's, she's, she, the day, I think the day after she posted about it and said that she was still, um, you know, facing trauma from what happened the night before. Now, if they had not necessarily recognized that because she was a public figure, she probably would have been shot dead or something bad would have happened. It, it's, it's, is it just about 
reviewing this policy of whistleblowing or should we also be reviewing uh, these searches or breaking into these um, homes? I'm going to uh, pose that question I, to uh, I, Mr. Tamunola. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I I'm sorry, let me pose that question to Mr. Tamunola because he's a, a lawyer. Uh, Mr. Tamunola, the issue of whistleblowing is not just that of people giving misinformation or wrong information, but how about the searches and how it's done? Many people have fallen prey to, you know, um, maybe a wrong house, a wrong resident, or a wrong person, a case of a wrong person. And sometimes these people end up being shot dead or being beaten or maimed. So I'm, what about reviewing that process of searching or taking a person into custody, the brutality that follows? Well, um, let me say good evening to you, Adora. Let me say good evening to Marianne. my friend, my brother in Kotaria that I haven't seen for so many months now and uh <laughs> good evening <laughs> my brother good evening see, see the law the law is very clear um when it comes to issue of a uh, summons when it comes to execution of uh, warrants and whatsoever the law is clear it's governed by the administration of criminal justice at number seven of 2015. there is nothing wrong with the law what, there is everything wrong about the implementation. Um, you, uh, when, when we are talking about the aspect of whistleblowing, the important thing is who, he who alleges must prove. It, it, there is nothing wrong. I mean, there, for the aspect of whistleblowing, let us first of all establish that where there is a right, there is obligation. And because there is a right, because there is a, a right and obligation, there is also a, a benefit. And if there is a benefit, there must also be sanction in the context it's that the, when the whistleblower is found to be culpable, what, what happens to him? Because based on that information that is abused, the, 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 the magistrate takes an action. And of course, in order to be able to issue the warrant, the law is... Section 35, Section 36, Section 37, Section 38 of uh, what they call it, the uh, Part 3 of uh, uh, the Administration of Criminal Justice Act. The magistrate will not just act in fact, will not act in fact. The magistrate is expected to know the facts. The magistrate is expected to be furnished with who you are going to arrest. The magistrate is expected to be furnished with that information regarding the identity, the location, and whatsoever. So based on that, you can't be talking about a misnomer. You can't be talking about error. You can't be talking about a misplacement. You can't say you are going to... But, uh, but, but these are the claims that were made by the magistrate. We, we, we all heard it. <laughs> Uh, no, but so somewhere along the line, once, once uh, what they call it, there is a breach, because now you have gone to the house of a particular person, that person has a right under the Nigerian Constitution, that uh, 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 Section 4 of the Nigerian Constitution, when you are wrong, that person has the powers to come against you, whether you are federal government, whether you are a state government, you are local government, whether you are the Nigerian police and whatsoever. The unfortunate challenge I have here is that our institutions are not just working. Let's cast our mind back to uh, what they call it, um, uh, the Black Lives Must Be Saved incident um, in America. Black Lives Matter. To, mm -hmm. up, 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 up till today, we are still, I mean, there are people that are still going in. Those particular people that uh, 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 that uh, initiated and executed that incident, we know what has happened to them. And the trial was public and whatsoever. For these people that have come, whether the attorney general is complicit, the attorney general, if the attorney general is complicit, I mean, the beginning of the journey is that it should be honorable enough to simply say, I resign, I step aside. And of course, not only that, if he's culpable, he's not above the law. He should definitely be tried. There must be a proper investigation. But the attorney general has said course, that he doesn't the, know uh, anybody. He has, doesn't know this man. He's never met him ever before in his life. And so that what he's telling us is cock and bull stories. So, I, I don't the reason why those statements were made. Uh, so, sorry, Miriam, I beg your pardon. I, apologies. Miriam, the simple reason why this, those statements could be heard is because we have weak institutions. Because on the basis of strong institutions, 
Look, investigations will be made within weeks, within days, within months. Look, Donald Trump con uh, uh, was uh, alleged to have done something in his wee days, in his closing days. Up to today, investigations are still going on regarding uh, the invasion of the of the White House, I mean, of the uh, Capitol, and so on. So the simple problem is that you get into a party, you win a, you, you, you get into government based on a party, and then there are breaches, there are infractions, and somebody sits back and says, okay, this, uh, this, this is a member of Party A, Party B, and on the basis of that, rather than to, to, to sanction for, to give sanctions, investigations, appropriate sanctions for infractions, what you do is to turn the other way around. For goodness sake, if you could do this to the justice of the highest court of the land, the Supreme Court, then who are you and me? It's unfortunate. Quickly, before before we go, because we're running out of time, Mr. Tamanola, um, you're saying that the Attorney General needs to be put on trial or investigated because of the claims that have been made. Uh, the magistrate, on one hand, is saying it was a misnomer, misinformation, it was a wrong residence, and you have clearly stated that he needs to have the right information. What if he was also misled? Secondly, where is the precedence in this country that a highly placed person like the Attorney General of the Federation, who is also a political appointee of the President, um, is being <coughs> investigated uh, on that level, especially when it, it's been watered down to he said, she said, I don't know this person, uh, etc. Look, it's still the same challenge we are talking about. It's because of weak institutions. Because at the end of the day, who is the Attorney General of the Federation? I mean, for goodness sake, it came in by law. His operations are by law. Look at what happens in South Africa. We are talking about Zuma. We are talking about other officers. Look at uh, Oka that was, I mean, was taken in, in the, uh, regarding certain infractions uh, emanating from Nigeria. Where is that man today and whatsoever? The most important thing is, I mean, there is nothing like ignorance of the law. Ignorance of the law is no excuse. That, that oh, it was done in error. How do you know who is at fault except by an investigation? How do you know who, whether the attorney general, the magistrate, had done something. I mean, a magistrate is expected to act judiciously and judicially. You are expected to take a decision judiciously and judicially. And even the course of it, it is found that definitely you haven't done exercise and what they call it, your decision judiciously and judicially. What will happen? You must be investigated. There are appropriate uh, authorities. The NJ NJC is there to, I mean, to, uh, to, to, to look into the infractions of such a magistrate. And then for the attorney general, for goodness sake, it is because some of us have proved ourselves to be higher than the law. Well, to be, to be higher beds and so on. So no wow. matter what we are talking about, just go back that if this could happen to Mary, a honorable justice, and Mary Odili, imagine what will happen to the common man on the street. Imagine what will happen to Ikotaria wow. that is there and whatsoever. It is pathetic and we need a foundational restructuring. Okay. Definitely. Well, well, we'll keep our eyes on that story as it, it develops. But I want to say thank you to Openabo Inko Tare and, of course, uh, uh, Mariam, Chris Mariam, Mariam, please, We're please, out of time. Mariam, We're out of time in one sentence what because we need to go. To those, those, that, those operatives that have been arrested, what has happened to them? We want to know. Like it and Lola rightly said, they should be prosecuted and let the attorney general go to court to prove his innocence. We'll wait and see what happens. That. We'll wait and see what happens. But thank yeah. you very much. Chrissy Tavanola, El Punaboy and Kotara, thank you very much for joining us on this conversation. Thank you. It's my pleasure. Well, thank you all for staying with us. We'll take a short break. And when we return, we examine the need for judicial reforms in Nigeria. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.